This is uh, the fifth and last screencast about the history and globalization of English. It will deal with what's called late modern English um, in the period from around 1800 until the present day. Um, basically, the way words are pronounced, the way words are spelled, and the grammar of English um, stay close to unchanged in this period. But what sort of marks the change from early modern English to late modern English is the changes in vocabulary. And Two things are especially important here. Um, number one, the Industrial Revolution, which means that new words enter the English language for these new things and ideas of the period. And secondly, um, the British Empire, uh, where many foreign words are adopted into English and sort of made English um, by contact with many foreign people. For example, the technological developments of the 19th century, uh, many of them actually started in Britain, including the steam engine. Um, so there were steam-powered inventions in many areas, for example, looms to um, uh, create fabric for clothes, but also locomotives, so transport, and so on. Um, and the U.S. also uh, pushed forward English, made it dominant, because it became an industrial nation of its own. Um, so new technologies, new sciences, new ideas mean new words. Oxygen nuclear, vaccine, and bacteria from different kinds of science, locomotive, engine, electricity, telephone, different kinds of technology. Usually these words were loan words from Latin or from Greek, but some were sort of original English creations, although they were based on Latin or Greek roots, and uh, that's Exactly what we see here in the picture is a, 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 one of the earliest steam engines. Um, so colonialism, uh, this policy where you try to create colonies around the world and also uh, what, well, what became known as the British Empire. Um, if we look at this map, all the pink areas were at one time or another part of the British Empire. So almost every single continent there is part of it that has been British at some point. Um, the empire was at its biggest, at its peak in 1921 after the First World War, uh, when around 25% of the world was part of the British Empire. Um, this process begins in the 16th century. At that time, somewhere between 5 and 7 million people spoke English. But over the next 300 years, that number would grow 50 times and at its peak 80% of English speaking people lived outside of Britain. Um, and there was this colonial mentality idea that the English language and English culture represented civilization. So English was seen as a good thing, something to spread to these undeveloped countries of the world. Uh, and 
So why was that? Um, well, one thing was profit, money, money, money. Um, the British wanted to make money off of their colonies, but the colonized people could also uh, profit from becoming part of this trade system if they learned English. Um, another thing was order and political unity. Government always becomes easier if people speak the same language. Um, this also resulted in the creation of what's called pidgin languages, and it has nothing to do with birds. Um, pidgins are sort of reduced languages that are used to communicate between people with no language in common. For example, African slaves and English-speaking sailors and traders. Um, these pidgin languages are only spoken languages, but once they become established in an area, um, and the, these uh, languages start to get their own native speakers, they're called creoles, sort of simplified versions of English. For example, a language spoken by a small group of people on the American East Coast called Gullah. Um, so this new world, um, the English started colonizing North America in 1607. Well, there was one attempt earlier on Roanoke Island, which, which was a, uh, a disaster. Uh, but the British met Native Americans, so new words entered the English language. Raccoon, moose, tomato, squash, words for animals and kinds of food that the British had never seen before. Uh, but parts of the New World, of course, uh, had already been settled by the Spanish and the French and the Dutch. Uh, and immigration to North America was not at all limited to English speakers. Uh, after the 13 colonies declared their independence from Britain, this process continued. And well, often newcomers to America were, they saw that it was best to start speaking English though, because that helped with integration. Um, Thomas Jefferson, who was president of the U.S. from 1801 to 1809, wrote four years after he'd been president, the new circumstances under which, under which we are placed call for new words, new phrases, and for uh, the transfer of old words to new objects. An American dialect will therefore be formed. And Jefferson was right. Um, as American settlers spread westward, um, this is exactly what started to happen. New plants, new animals, new food meant new words. Um, and s sort of expressions that started in America, these Americanisms uh, were also created like skedaddle, liggity split, shebang, humdinger, to strike it rich, to kick the bucket. These were not expressions that the British had. They started in America. Um, and also new words came from Spanish, alligator, guitar, mosquito, tobacco. And these language inventions were then taken back to Britain. So around 4,000 words are actually used differently in the US and Britain today. Uh, but American usage is actually becoming more and more common in Britain also. Of course, the British had other colonies, um, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, India, and new words entered the English language from each of these places, koala, Kiwi, jungle, curry, apartheid, um, and, and also they had colonies in East Africa, West Africa, Southeast Asia, um, all over, though, 
English was generally seen as the language of power, of business, administration, and education. So where before England had been dominated by French-speaking people, now it was actually English-speaking people dominating other people out in the colonies. The English had become the new elite. In the 20th century, um, well, of course, first of all, the British Empire falls apart after the Second World War, where many colonies start to become independent. Um, but the 20th century has also seen a move toward political correctness in language. For example, feminism has started to point out the sexism of words like mailman and fireman and chairman. Uh, also, uh, minority groups such as um, uh, homosexuals, lesbians, have caused the English language to be re-examined. Uh, for example, there has been a suggestion that it should make sense to talk about history instead of history, because history is written by men. Um, and also, a certain rebranding or reclaiming, taking back of some words by these marginalized groups in society. Words like nigger, queer, gay, queen are now sort of a way to show and express your identity when you belong to these groups, even though they were used to talk down to these people before. Um, also, the 20th century has seen technological innovation. The information age has um, created new vocabulary, computer terminology like internet, byte, cyberspace, software, and so on. But also this sort of internet slang has entered mainstream language, noob, troll, spam, and so on. Um, and also uh, loan words from English have entered other languages, like Danish, for example, sport, and weekend. So English today is not just the language of the English. Um, in fact, uh, there are English speakers across the globe, and uh, more and more people are speaking English. For example, because it is by far the main language on the internet. Um, this means that English has become what's called a lingua franca, a language which is used to connect people who actually have other languages as their own. So it's sort of a common language between people. So to sum up, late modern English has seen new vocabulary due to the Industrial Revolution, due to the British Empire, um, English has spread to the New World with the American dialect and the dialects of other colonies, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, India. Um, and English has changed in the 20th century as well. Um, meaning that English today is so much more than what it was uh, when it started.